Wouldn't it be cooler if you could become Iron Man? Oh my gosh, that's the dream. Welcome to Are We There Yet? The series where we find out what's up with the metaverse. Today, I'm with Ryan Payton of Camouflage Game Studio. What's up, Ryan? Hey, Kiki, or big boss, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> You better know, Ryan. That's right. I did my research on you, too. I did my research on you, <laughs> and I love that nickname. Now, I read that you make meaningful games. What does that mean to you? I started playing video games that had really impactful stories, just like any great film yes. or a great book. I want to be able to make games like that that has a really touching story, and that's what I did on Halo 4. Oh. So that's what we've been up to for the last 10, 11 years. The line between metaverse and classic gaming seems to be a little bit blurry. What is the difference exactly? For me, it's really about the immersive nature of VR, and it's not going to replace your standard video game experience. You can still have that in the living room with your friends on the couch, it's all good, right? But for VR, we put players into the world, and that's like, for example, what we did with Marvel's Iron Man VR. We thought, wouldn't it be cooler if you could become Iron Man, and you see full 360, you're in uh, the world, you are Iron Man. That's that sense of presence that is afforded by these devices like VR. Okay, sense of presence. Can you describe that? It sounds like a TV show about a psychic detective. <laughs> for example, I, I play a lot of rounds of uh, walkabout mini golf with my coworkers after work, where we just kind of blow off some steam, play a few rounds, talk about work. Using the haptics, the spatial audio, it feels like they're right next to you as you're playing these games. What exactly are haptics? These are motors that are in these controllers, these touch controllers, to simulate what's happening in the virtual world, right? Mm -hmm. For example, I've tried out experimental gloves where I'm looking on a screen and there's a spider that's on my hand and it feels like <laughs> on my palm, the little legs of the spider just really blew my mind in terms of, wow, this is where the technology is heading. I'm putting in my request for a bubble bath VR oh, and a massage one while we're at it. <laughs> we'll start working on that. Okay, so how is the metaverse opening up social connection for gaming? Yeah, you might not believe this, but I learned Japanese playing online games with Japanese folks who are willing to teach me their language as we were playing. Wow. And what's on the immediate horizon is technology that, for example, Meta's building, which is a speech-to-speech, AI-driven auto-translator. So you can speak your native language to somebody else who doesn't speak your native language, and it auto-translates it in real time. So that's going to bring players together more closely than they've ever been before. That's incredible. So the metaverse isn't just connecting digital and physical reality, but it's also bridging language gaps. And connecting people, which is super exciting, right? That is so exciting. That's the future. Oh, thank you so much, Ryan. It was so much fun speaking with you. Thank you big boss. Hey, uh, and we're not done yet. You're going to tell me all the cheat codes to Marvel's Iron Man VR. Yeah, well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs>